Hey everybody, this is Garrett from Earth and Time and today for Fossil Friday, we're gonna go check out St. George Dinosaur Discovery Site in St. George, Utah. So come along with me, let's go check this place out for our Fossil Friday adventure. Hours are 10 to five, Wednesday through Monday. And here's the admissions, $8 for adults, $7 for seniors and kids are $4. And then they also have various passes you can get as well. And dogs are allowed, that's pretty exciting. All right, let's go check out this museum go check out some trackways. On the way in, they have a lot of nice displays about what paleontologists do, what this track site used to look like before they built this museum. They also talk about how to protect fossils and discoveries for future generations, as well as here's a history of paleontology. Paleontology is a study of extinct life using fossils, but not just dinosaurs, but also insects, plants, mammals, etc. As a paleontologist, one thing they try to do is they try to take the world of biology, and especially ancient biology, where they learn about, about living things in the past and tie that to geology. I think we want to do is we start thinking about these trackways. I start talking about them. Let me talk to you a little bit about where we are in time. And what we're looking at today is we're looking at this Moanavi formation. Right at about 200 million years ago, there were dinosaurs walking right through this area and all kinds of creatures living here in a very different environment, very wet environment because there's a big lake here at that time. Geologists and paleontologists use stratigraphic columns to measure what the rocks are, what kind of observations they see in the rocks, including if they see trackways, if they see fossils of fish or shells, and they use this information in order to start putting together the story about what was happening here. And for this one, it's putting the story together of Lake Whitmore. So these dinosaurs were walking around the edge of what was known as Lake Whitmore, which you can see here's the outline of Utah. Here's Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, for those of you familiar with this area. So you can see how large Lake Whitmore probably was. And here's where we're at today in St. George. And so is this lake would fill and desiccate the dinosaurs and other creatures would roam around any and the dinosaurs they thought that were walking around lake whitmore are something like this the dilophosaurus so how did the fossils actually get here dinosaurs would roam along the edge of lake whitmore where they'd be hunting for things like fish or maybe other dinosaurs and they'd step in muddy layers footprints would be left behind and then there could be rising water from rivers or from the lake rising up and it would deposit sediment where they stepped in and then what would happen is that those would become preserved and then eventually we would end up finding them so this is a eubrontes track and they think it was made by something similar to a dilophosaurus and what's amazing about this is for geologists not just paleontologists is the preservation of this track as well as the mud cracks that are around it so this eubrontes track what's fascinating is we can actually see the nails of the dinosaur that were have impressions into the mud and we can see its knuckle joints going through there as well it's a spectacularly preserved track and then i can take a look at the sedimentary structures that are left behind and see there are mud cracks and a lot of mud cracks and very well-defined mud cracks which tells me this was an area that got water and then would dry out got water and then would dry out and here is a nice example of that for many of you who've, who've seen dried out riverbeds you get these mud cracks and so what happens is they get wet they they re-expand because it's mostly clay they dry out they get mud cracks and then there can be later deposition that preserves those mud cracks and that's exactly what we're seeing here in this rock all through here pretty cool so one of the things they've done here and they've done a superb job at and it's world class and i think people have to come visit is they've preserved whole sections of the original rock here which preserves the the sedimentary structures and some of the trackways of ancient lake whitmore so as we walk around we can see how the paleontologists have marked various features here like the different layers so they can keep track of what was happening each of these layers or something going on with the lake at that time either it's rising or it's or or it's desiccating it's lowering and it also tells us a little bit about the environment and we can see what kind of different dinosaurs maybe were walking around so during this time they have what's called growlator which is a smaller theropod dinosaur to walk up and see where it walked through time so we're actually seeing where a dinosaur walked at one point in time which is amazing so he stepped here he stepped here and look there's even a little scratch mark where it looks like maybe 
the dinosaur, the little growlator, slipped in the mud a little bit. Fascinating. It's really cool to see where dinosaurs once walked. The growlator track we looked at was here in purple, and you can see the little slip mark they marked here and where it stepped going out in that distance. You can still see those markers there. If I come on the other side, I'm going to see even more trackways. So can you all see, see the beautiful track right there? And there's some other tracks that, you know, they're in here. Some of them aren't well as well preserved because of course this is a very muddy environment and a dynamic environment. One of the other things we can learn about the dinosaurs here is by looking at their strides. So if I take a look from the right hand side of this feature, we can see how they can look at a track of a dinosaur and they can measure between each of the tracks and they can tell what its hip height was as well as if it was running or not. So first track, we can go over to where the second track is and you can see they put 1.49 meters in there. And then we go to the next track and 1.56. So remember a meter is 3.28 feet. So a little over three feet between. Here's another track and then here's the left track. So this is his right, left, right, left. So look at the amount of ground this, this creature ran all the way across here. And this is one of the smaller dinosaurs. So here's a fantastic mural of what they thought Lake Whitmore would have looked like at the time around this natural setting. And I will say there's a funny Easter egg in here. I'll see if any of you notice it as I hand through over here and see who is visiting these dinosaurs here at Lake Whitmore. One of the other things I want to show is the fact that they actually have what are called swim tracks here. And you'll see this dinosaur here and you'll see the its toes scraping into the mud past the, the horseshoe crab down here. And it creates these three little lines as it's swimming. And we're going to see some of those tracks here. We have the world's largest best preserved collection of dinosaur swim tracks. And these tracks ended all controversy on whether or not dinosaurs actually. It's one of the most unique fossils they have here or ichnofossils, means trace fossils, is what you call trackways, is they have swim tracks. And so you can actually see where a dinosaur was in deep enough water, it couldn't get traction anymore by stepping normally, so it would swim. So it scraped its toes in the mud and swam. And you can see there was probably, I guess, a herd of dinosaurs maybe doing this, or multiple dinosaurs going through the same area. And you can see some more here as well. And this large panel has a lot of tracks on it. So I'm just gonna pan through and see where we can see some tracks. I can see some tracks right right in here. There's some tracks and you can actually see the growlator walking through. So if we take a look just up here, there's some tracks up in there. You can see where it's stepped over here. So it's stepping, 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 walking that direction. What else do we see? Oh, we see a lot of other tracks. You can actually see their knuckle joints in there and the tracks as well. Take a look at the tracks that we have evidence of in the rocks here, but then they can take a look and say, okay, what kind of dinosaur feet may match these track types? And so we can take a look and see what kind of, kind of foot patterns may fit that. So for instance, a Utah Raptor, basically you'd expect to see just two toes in the mud as opposed to three, because it had the one claw that was up. Whereas an Allosaurus, you may see three toes or the Dilophosaurus, like we saw earlier, had three toes with the nails. So maybe it's something more similar to that. Look at things like a Ceratops. So we can come over here, a Triceratops. So this is from the Utah Ceratops. And we can take a look at how his toes has one, two, three, four. Well, that doesn't fit what we're seeing here. And also the size is quite large. And this is what those trackways look like. So here's the toes, one, two, three, four. And then we can see a much smaller dinosaur foot here, which is maybe more closely related to what we think the growlator questions is what could be making the growlator or the smaller dinosaur tracks. These smaller tracks that we see on the wall behind us, they think one of these creatures may have actually made it. We have a fossil preparatory lab and here you can see they're working on a phytosaur, a crocodile from the late Triassic and they have this volunteer cleaning the fossils and the rocks so they can display them and she's telling some folks about that one of the things as geologists and paleontologists we try to do is try to understand the environment in which rocks are deposited or which with which dinosaurs existed in or lived in and one of the things we can do is we can take a look at what the rock layer is showing us to give us hints 
like these ripple marks coming through here, which you can see on shorelines, at any beach, you can see shorelines, uh, any lake, right? So this gives us an idea that there's water coming here, making these little ripple marks. They actually found tree branches and fish bones. So here's a nice picture of a dinosaur swimming in the lake. Here's some fish and they found fish fossils here as well. And here's one of those tree branches that were submerged and then the algae helped protect and create the calcium carbonate, basically creating like a limestone layer around it, which then helped preserve it and gives us something like this today, where you can see what's left of this tree that would have been in the, in the water, similar to that picture. Can everybody see that? You can see the outline of the branches and there's where like a, a, a limb came out. And again, more evidence that we were along a lake, an ancient lake here, because we can actually see the ripple marks Again, just like you see if you go to the beach or you go to a lake today, you can actually see the ripple marks where the water would come in and out. And it gives us a an idea about the direction. So the water would have been going that way and that way as it came in and out. We can see that in these lake environments are what we call stromatolites, where, which are actually made up of cyanobacteria and they create these big mounds. And so these are a bunch of algae mounds or algae mounds, which we refer to as stromatolites. And those are pretty common in lake environments. You can see these today up in the Great Salt Lake as well. Here's some symmetrical waveforms, just like you see at a beach. So again, we can look at all this evidence and figure out what kind of environment we're in. And also we can look at these and figure out based on knowing what we know about modern systems, we can get an idea of the current direction. So we can see that water would go this way across here. With dinosaurs, they also have evidence of other creatures, maybe worms that were coming through here different kinds of worms that would lived in the mud, just like we see at lake beds now. I have here is they talk about the plant life that was around Lake Wickamore as well. It's not just dinosaurs were here, of course, but they actually had plants and they can actually find plant material in the area to give them a hint of what could have been around the lakes here. And one of the neatest finds here is they've actually found fish fossils in the area. So they know what kind of fish were in Lake Whitmore and they're able to describe them and get an idea of maybe what the dinosaurs were, were eating here or going after. They have this whole area outside where you can come for a picnic, you can sit and have lunch, and you can walk through and look at an interpretive trail and see everything from dinosaur bones, petrified wood, dinosaurs. And what they do is they walk you through geologic time with a focus on Utah, which is really neat. Thank you all for joining me at the St. George Dinosaur Discovery site. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel to keep up on all, all these adventures, to learn about minerals, to learn about fossils, to learn about history. Make sure when you subscribe, you hit that bell for notification. And thank you all for joining me today and go out there and find some rocks.